Hello, Truth Seekers. I want to welcome everyone that was at the St. John Vianney full day prayer retreat that I led this past week. There's hundreds of you that are seeing this email for the first time. So welcome to the Truth Seekers community. I called it Truth Seekers because there are people of all walks of life on this email. Some people are Catholic Christians. Some are not Catholic Christians. Some are Jewish. Some are other religious and spiritual practices. And some are really just seeking the truth. And so I wanted to call it Truth Seekers because we all want truth in our lives. Who wants to be lied to? <laughs> and I felt like most of my life I was lied to by this world, by myself, right? And what I believed in because the world told me what to believe in. And also by the old hairy legs. We all know Satan had a, had a little play in there. But in the end, I now know the truth, the meaning of life, the truth to salvation. And I hope that others are learning along with everyone else to become holier and get into heaven. All righty, let's talk about today's subject, which is falling on your Lenten journey. How many of you have fallen already? Yeah, you're not alone. I did. I fell on day eight in a big way. <laughs> so here's what happened. I'm, I went to Houston. I had a couple of events and I came home after a couple of hour delay on the flight. I was just kind of tired, but I ate breakfast. I'm being called to eat one meal a day. That's my Lenten sacrifice. And it's kind of tough to figure out when that meal will happen because I'm traveling so much and I've got like dinners planned one night or, um, you know, I don't know when I'll be able to eat with the flight travels plans and all that jazz. So I got to take every day as it comes and then think about the next day so that I'm not, you know, actually not eating for more than a day and a half because then I get a little crazy. Well, this was not the case. I ate breakfast at the Houston airport. It was a wonderful breakfast. And then it was about 6, 6.30 at night, and I decided, oh my gosh, I'm hungry. I want to eat. I decided, if you notice. Everyone knows that I've been receiving these wonderful whooshes. Most of you that subscribe to my podcast know this, but I have a relationship with God now that if I ask a yes or no question, he answers me with a whoosh if it's yes and nothing if it's no. Well, did I ask him if I should eat? Nope. I was calm though. So if I reflect back, and those of you who do not have this practice to look back on your day, please implement it because that's the one way that you're gonna grow. If you don't look back and see where God was in your life and where God wasn't in your life, where you decided to drive and where you overrode his will, that is really important to, to, to identify and to find areas that we can improve. Okay, so that night I just said, okay, Lord, I'm hungry, but I wasn't ravenous. If my body was, we all know that where you have this overwhelming urge, like somebody better get me whatever it is that you quit, right? If it's chocolate or I don't know what, coffee, somebody better get it for me right now. Well, that is a bodily urge. And waiting and praying your way through that is the only way to stop that. You know that your body is mastering you if you fall into that temptation. So stop, say a Hail Mary, call out to, the, to Jesus in Jesus' name. I renounce the spirit of temptation. I send you to the foot of the cross for Jesus to pour his precious blood on you and receive your sentence. You do that, you pray the Hail Mary, and you ask Mary to wrap you in her mantle, I'm pretty sure that that overwhelming urge will be gone. But this wasn't that. I was calm. I started to ask God, do you want me to eat? But I didn't want the answer, so I stopped. I didn't finish the question, and I just said, I am going to eat. And then I decided that I was going to offer it up to God. I don't know if you've ever done that before, but as you're enjoying this beautiful piece of cake or that coffee or whatever you're doing, right? Whatever you've sacrificed, 
Say, Lord, I love you. This is so amazing, so delicious. Thank you. I tried to offer up my dinner, so I made dinner. It was just a little bit of um, roast beef and this kind of pate thing. I eat keto, so I eat sort of protein and fat, but this night I didn't. I went in, not that one, to that cabinet and I had Oreos and chocolate covered Reese's pretzels. <laughs> so as I was eating those, I was honestly feeling guilty, but I still enjoyed them and I had too many. When I was done, I went up to bed and I thought, wow, what was that all about? Why did I eat that? Because I really wasn't hungry, if I'm honest. I really wasn't. And if I look back on this Lenten journey so far, I'm really liking the feeling of being hungry. And it should make us hunger for God and hunger for the Lord. That's what fasting is all about reminding ourselves that there are other people out there thinking of our brothers and sisters in Christ who are hungry all the time. And we, in a lot of cases, have food available to us all, always. I can go there, I can go there, I can eat whatever I want at any time. And I've been feeling really good about not eating and feeling appreciative of the hunger and also at the times when I do get those urges, I run to God. So the next day I got up and I prayed to God saying, you know what, Lord, I don't know what that was all about. I didn't feel any better from eating that stuff. I don't feel guilty though, because Lord, I know you love me even in my weakness. And it's the bounce that counts. We should not be looking at Lent as a 40-day or 46-day, if you're including Sundays, punishment, and then we go right back to our lives and live like we did before Lent. Lent is an opportunity to train us to live differently and to put God in our lives during those times of despair and temptation, right? I love calling out to God and saying, Lord, please come here and help me. Help me love this uncomfortable, empty stomach feeling. And I have been. When I looked back on that day when I ate a lot and a lot of Oreos and a lot of those chocolate covered Reese's peanut butter pretzel things, I didn't feel so good. I was up a couple of times during the night and I was thinking, okay, I got to learn from this. Please do the examine, look back on your day, see where God was and where God wasn't. Well, God's always there, but where did you ignore him, right? Where did you decide, like I did, not to ask him for his will or ask him for his help? This is the pray incessantly every day kind of thing. And if you do it and reflect either at night, I try, I, re <laughs> I really do. It's part of the Ignatian spirituality exercises and it's something that you should really get into, but I end up falling asleep. I know I would do it if I got on my knees and got out of bed, but I usually start when I lay down and I put my head on the pillow. However, the next day, it's the first thing that I do when I'm preparing myself for prayer. I review the, the day before with God and I start my act of contrition on the things that I didn't do well. And then I ask him to take my will, my intellect, and my memory. And for this day, I give it to you. I also ask the Holy Spirit and my guardian angel to purify my thoughts, to purify my actions, and to be with me and guide me and lead me this day. It's a daily review it's a daily opportunity to grow in virtue. And we have to remember that we cannot be the person that God created us to be without God. You know the two greatest commandments. Love God with all thy mind, thy heart, thy soul, and thy strength. Because you can't do number two, which is love thy neighbor as thyself. And we got to love ourselves. 
Do not beat yourself up if you fell down during the Lent, the Lenten journey already. If you've done it a couple of times, get back up. It's the bounce that counts and God is waiting for you like a father, like a daddy with his open arms to hug you and to bring you back into virtuous living. Are you kidding me? He wants you to succeed. So if you're like me, get back up, bounce back, run to God. If it was a horrific mortal sin, run to God into confession. If you haven't been to confession, go. I go once a week and I have been actually confessing some of my battles where my body has mastered me instead of me mastering my body. So this week, it's the bounce that counts. If you fall, get right back up the very next moment, right? Go to God, say, I love you, Lord, please help me. Help me be like you. And then continue to do that. Remember, this is how the, that's why it's a journey. It's every single day. This is how life is. Some days are gonna be great. Other days aren't gonna be so great, but that's okay. As long as you have God with you every step, it will be beautiful. Alrighty, everyone, it's the bounce that counts. I know I keep saying that, but hopefully you'll think about that the next time you fall because I'm sure there will be a next time. <laughs> we are human and he gets that. All right, go be the light to everyone. Have a blessed and inspired day. Take care.